So now we're going to grind the valve seats. Uh, we did the valve face. Now we do the valve seats, and then we will match the two together to make as close to a perfect seal as we possibly can. Uh, to grind the seats, we need to find a stone that is the right size. So we need one that's the right diameter and the right angle. If it is not the right angle, that can be changed with our stone dressing tool. So we can take a 30 degree stone, which this is, and change it to a 45 if we have to, but we do waste some material in doing that. Sometimes in a pinch, we have to. So if I check that, that uh, stone, it fits on that seat pretty much perfectly. That's the right size. So now I will install that on one of our driver mandrels, and they just thread on. And you want to just snug them up. You don't have to make them tight because it's going to turn in a tightening rotation anyway. And then we'd put our, our guide mandrel in there. Is this an expandable mandrel? They come in different shapes and sizes and all that sort of thing. This happens to be the right one for this head. So if I put that into the guide and then I snug this, it expands the other end to make it tight so there's no wiggle or movement. Now it is perfectly symmetrical with the seat. So when I grind the seat, the seat is going to be symmetrical with the valve stem. We could make a, a round seat that's off to one side. It wouldn't seal very good. We need to have it symmetrical with the guide. So now when we put that on there, we can see that it's going to work good. Before I do it, I'm going to dress this stone. Make sure it's at a true 30 degrees. It has some wear because it has ground some seats already. So I want a nice true surface before I do that. Once I true this stone, I could probably grind two, maybe three seats before I, ha before I have to redress it, or the seat dresser, or stone dresser, whatever you call it. All right, if I put that on my uh, dressing tool, and what I want to do is make sure that this is adjusted properly. So if I loosen this, I can move this to the proper angle that I need for the seat. Those seats are 30 degrees, I've already checked that, so I'm going to adjust this until I get to 30 degrees, and that's 30 degrees uh, mark right on the thing there. I'm just going to tap it gently into place. That's exactly 30 degrees, and I'm going to snug that down so it doesn't move. Now I need to adjust my uh, stroke length, and so that I don't go too far. Well, it doesn't matter hitting the stem down there anyway, but this is too high, and I'd have to screw this out a long ways. So what I'm going to do is take this wrench and lower the stem that this mandrel is sitting on. I'll just tap that down gently until I'm within range. That's pretty close. And I'll snug that up so it doesn't move. There can be a lot of vibration. You want to make sure things are snug because when you hit the trigger on the driver, it, everything can shake and move on you. So now I'm going to adjust the diamond down. I'm adjusting that until just scratching the stone and snug up that so it doesn't vibrate and move. Now I'm going to take my driver. All right, this is a high speed driver and it's going to spin our stone at a good speed and we're going to dress off the surface material. Uh, there is a guard around here in case that stone should shatter. There is some grinding dust comes off of this. You don't want to do this around open engines or transmissions. That grinding dust could be very damaging. Uh, you don't want to spin the stone too fast for too long. You want to do this as quickly as you can with the least amount of uh, effort and taking off the least amount of material. If this tool should fall on the floor, it rolls off the bench, that stone would have to be checked extremely closely. And me personally, I've had these stones fly apart. So if I feel that stone is damaged, I'm going to take it over to an anvil and I'm going to smash it. And I'm going to throw it in the garbage so nobody else gets hurt by that stone. When they fly apart, they can be very dangerous. All right, we put our driver in there and we don't want the driver to hang on there like that or we don't want to lift up too high. We want to neutralize so we aren't pushing or pulling in any one direction. And I'm just going to spin it up. And I got to adjust a bit more. And I'll take a little bit more off yet, just to make sure it's true. All right. I probably took off more than I needed to, but for demonstration purposes, oh, you know what? I didn't. We still have a shoulder there. I have to take off more to make that stone good. I didn't take enough off. Look at that. I'll give that uh, another bit of a turn on the diamond and we'll dress it a bit more. Try to avoid breathing the dust. 
So now it has dressed on most of the way around, but it's not concentric. I've got to take off a little bit more yet. It's a good example of what you need to do. Sometimes you've got to take a fair bit of material off of these. All right, we have a pretty well-dressed stone now. It's nice and clean, it's at the right angle, and it can dress our seats. When grinding valves or seats, all the material you take off changes how far the valve protrudes into the combustion chamber. If you move that valve 20 thousandths of an inch further into the cylinder head, and you take the area of that valve, pi r squared, and move that pi r squared figure that you found in 20 thousandths of an inch, it makes a reasonable difference in the compression ratio of the engine. If you do that on two or four valves, you might lower the compression enough that the engine won't start for you. So you have to look at the manufacturer's specs and see that when you put the valves in, that too much material has been taken off and the valve protrudes the right amount. So we set that on there. We grab our motor driver here. And this is a fine stone to give us a good finish. And we want to take off as little as possible, but true it up. As a matter of fact, just to show, I'm going to put my felt marker on there first and blacken this up so we can see whether it's cleaned up or not. All right, a quick touch and we'll see what we got. All right, we can see the shiny spot. I'm gonna take a little bit more off. It's a little bit. The, when you do a head that has a lot of hours in industry, it might grind on one side only and you might have to take it down enough that you get full circumference of the grind seat. That's the part that we're doing right now is the part that is actually gonna seal against the valve face. So we wanna make sure it's perfect. All right, that looks pretty decent. We have a nice shiny narrow seat. We want a fairly narrow seat so that we have a contact surface pressure that's good enough to seal. If the seat's too wide, it spreads out that pressure and won't seal as good. Um, if it's too narrow, then it will get too hot. It won't cool properly in the engine. So it's important that we get the seat just right. Normally when we grind seats that are worn, they would end up too wide and we would have to narrow that seat down. So we can take a stone at a high degree angle, like 60 degrees, and we can put it in there and we can take off material from the inside diameter out. And that will narrow and raise the seat on our valve face. So here's our valve face. We want that seat to contact in the middle of that valve face. By taking some out of the inside, we're going to bring the seat out from the center to the outside diameter. But usually after we've ground, we need to take material off the outside high side. So we would use a fairly flat stone, like a 15 degree. And what that'll do is grind some of this top material away. And you actually have to take a fair bit. That is not lowering the valve into the head. It's just narrowing the seat. So if I spin this on here, and you can still see where, I'm gonna blacken that up again so that we can see what's going on a little better. The shiny surfaces are hard to tell. So a felt pen can be your good friend when you're doing this. You can use things like Prussian blue and stuff like that too. All right, so we blackened that up. Now if we put our, our low angle stone of 15 degrees, and for this I wanna use a coarse stone because I need to remove some material here, whereas on the face or on the seat, I didn't wanna remove much material at all because that would lower the valve head into the cylinder. This will not, this will just change the uh, width of the seat and it's going to lower the seat when I say lower, it's gonna move it more to the inside diameter of the valve head. Because as we grind that seat, it moves outward. Now we're gonna take off the top material to move it back in again. We can position it wherever we want. So I'm gonna grind a little away here. So you can see I ground a little bit longer on this one and I used the coarse stone because again, I needed to remove some material. And there is two seat angles there, but they're really hard to see now because everything is shiny and all that sort of thing. But what we would do before we'd go any further now is we would check with our valve. So now if I take my valve and I insert it in here and it fits very nicely and there's no play, that nice new guide. Now I'm gonna put my finger underneath there and I'm gonna smack this down. Before you do that, you wanna make sure there's enough room for your finger when you smack it down. I've seen too many people hit that valve and their fingers underneath and gets pinched to the table and then they do the pain dance. So I'm just gonna smack that down a few times and see where my contact is. 
So if you can see the line, the line is, and we're probably only seeing one side of the seat, and that's okay. That line looks like it's in a perfect location for us. I don't think I need to do anything more to that seat. If the seat was still too wide and too far to the inside diameter, I would use the sharp cone-shaped stone of 60 degree. If it was too high to the outside, I would hit it again with our low angle uh, 15 degree stone to narrow it and bring it in. And when I get it in the middle third of the valve face and the right width, then I'm very happy with that grind and the engine should be happy too and run a good long life without failure.